This is the Samsung NX200. With excellent photo quality, solid performance, and a very nicely designed body, the NX200 distinguishes itself in an increasingly crowded field. But $900 still seems like a bit too much to ask for a camera that's not at the front of its class on all counts. Thankfully, there's more to the NX200 than just a 20 megapixel sensor. It's much better than its predecessor. It is smaller, yet more comfortable to grip, and it's more solidly built. For those unfamiliar with Samsung's eye function system, it consists of a button on the lens which invokes shooting settings, which you can then change using the manual focus ring. The system works well, and it feels much like you're shooting with the Canon PowerShot S100 or the Olympus XC1. It also distinguishes the NX cameras from other interchangeable lens models in a way that adds to the shooting experience rather than detracts from it. If you choose to go the traditional route, the camera smart panel interactive control panel interface operates much more like a typical camera. It's easy to use, but I found myself missing the type of customization controls that Panasonic's cameras offer over the interface, as well as the capability to save custom settings. You can program a raw override, as well as which options appear on the eye function ring, but that's just not as much as I'd like. The camera really does produce excellent photos, given its price tag of less than $1,000. Combined with relatively clean images off the sensor, its noise profile is very good. The color accuracy looks really good. Metering and exposure are generally both consistent and appropriate, and the sensor handles bright, saturated colors well, as long as you're willing to put in some work recovering highlights from a RAW file. Blown out light colors don't fare quite as well, though. There's no detail there. With the right lens, the camera delivers sharp images, too. The 18 to 55 millimeter kit lens is typical. It's good enough with respect to sharpness and brightness to match competitors, but leaves you craving something better. The 85mm f1.4 and the stabilized 60mm f2.8 primes produce lovely images and are sharp, bright, and comfortable to use. The video in good light's very consumer friendly. It's bright, saturated, and sharp, and there's a little bit of moiré aliasing and rolling shutter, but it's fine for personal videos. It doesn't fare as well at night, though. There's just no tonal range to speak of. The camera has full manual exposure controls during movie recording, and there's a multi-motion mode that records and plays back both faster and slower than normal. The slow-mo mode only works at reduced frame sizes, though. Its biggest weakness is its image processing, and when reviewing photos, it's pretty good about displaying JPEGs, but if you shoot RAW plus JPEG, it gets really bogged down. Initial models of the camera had some autofocus speed and accuracy issues, but just before writing this, Samsung released new firmware that seems to fix the problems I had during testing. It's now faster and more accurate. Furthermore, while the OLED display is bright with good contrast and it doesn't wash out in sunlight, it's very reflective. I really wish it had an articulated or at least tiltable display. Aside what I've already mentioned, there aren't many standout shooting features. There's some novel effects, but you can't adjust the parameters. And if you use its magic frame, which overlays some huge preset designs over your shot, it reduces the photo's resolution to 2 megapixels. With excellent photo quality, a nice shooting design and interface, and solid performance, the NX200 makes a nice package. But it also means buying into a lone wolf lens system without much third-party support. And because image stabilization is in the lens rather than the sensor, you're subject to Samsung's whims for OIS-capable lenses. So that, combined with a ho-hum feature set, makes the camera's price seem overly high. I'm Lori Grunin, and this is the Samsung NX200.